Hello, good morning. Happy Saturday. Welcome to week two of the Romero Threads. Saturday morning, Embroidery School. Welcome. Uh, let's see, let me just make sure we are good to go here. Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Let me just lower this one here. All right, just wanna do a quick camera check. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, I think we're good. Just want to confirm on your side. All right, welcome to week number two. Today is going to be a very, very big one, okay? We're going to go into the details today of one of the biggest, uh, one, one of the biggest uh, niches, okay? I'm good. Thank you very much. Let me see. Put that up right here. You're good. All right, good to go. Thank you very much. All right, so we're gonna dive deep today into, let's see what we got, okay? Digitizing real estate logos, okay? So uh, we're gonna dive deep. We're gonna, we're gonna not only talk about real estate logos, but we're actually gonna digitize, hoop, and embroider uh, some of these uh, logos, okay? Some of the more common ones that you might see that some, some of us are accustomed to seeing. OK, because uh, the reason why I want to do all three. So I always talk about the digitizing. I always talk about the hooping and I always talk about the actual embroidery. OK, because I call that the embroidery triangle. OK, because one without the other. I mean, it pretty much doesn't happen. OK, so in order to have a successful. In order to have a successful stitch out, okay, you got it. We have to be good from the beginning all the way to the end. Okay, let me take care of this important question right here. This is, will this live stream be on YouTube to watch again? Definitely. Okay, this will definitely be on the replay. Uh, the, uh, the way I see it, okay, I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and usually it takes me three times, three rounds to listen to an audiobook to actually understand everything that the author's talking about, okay? So usually the first time when I listen to something, okay, I, I, I kind of understand it. And then I go back and then I go again, I listen to it a second time around. All right, now it starts making sense. And then when I go a third time, okay, now I can start applying it. Okay, so of course, the same thing with uh, videos, uh, training videos like that, they're always, uh, it's always good practice to watch it the first time, okay? Take whatever knowledge you learn, apply it, and then come back again and watch it the second time around. And, and, and you're going to start picking up other stuff that you didn't see on the first round. All right. So always very good to, um, to come back on the replay. All right. Also, if uh, Saturdays, I know for me, for us, our family here, very busy day. Okay. Usually Saturday, especially if you're running a, a home embroidery business, Saturday's like game day, right? That's the day where you could, uh, you pretty much have uh, the more hours of the day compared to the other week. So, okay, I know it's a busy day. And also towards the end of the day, it's family day, all right? So always a special day. So that's why I like to start the embroidery school very early, okay? It's eight o'clock here, okay? Usually I wake up at 5 a.m., especially if we're, if we're working on projects. I try to start as early as possible just because the post office here, I have one here that closes at two. Okay, so that's kind of like an advantage. All right, so uh, okay, we got a we got a it looks like we get, we're starting to get a packed house today. All right, so let's see, we have uh, Evelyn. Good morning. I have my coffee, definitely. Okay, uh, I actually have my coffee in the kitchen. All right, I didn't want to bring it just because I don't want to fumble it and drop it right here. But yes, definitely, I'm two coffees in. After this show, I'll do another my last one for the morning. Okay, and um, we got Barb. Good morning from North Central Minnesota. All right, I know it's definitely cold there because if it's cold here, north of Chicago, I already know it's cold there. All right, all right. Let's see. Uh, we got a uh, good morning from Salinas, California. All right, big shout out to the Central Cali. All right, good morning. Yep, BV Jean. Good morning from the snowy up. All right. I already know how cold it is there. All right, let's see this one. 6 a.m. here, but I have my coffee too. All right, cool. Yeah, so um, this kind of this time here, it's eight o'clock central, so it's eight o'clock my time. 
I think it kind of works out for a lot of people. All right. I know if you're West Coast, 6 a.m. All right. But uh, I already know if you're if you have home embroidery business, you're already up. OK, I already know that. All right. So. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's kind of get started with our uh, training for today. All right. Because it is jam packed. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. All right. So uh, let me just take a quick pause, introduce the show. So welcome to the Romero Thread Saturday morning embroidery school. OK, uh, this class, uh, what I want to kind of focus on is a lot of the fundamentals. OK, because if you master the fundamentals, you pretty much can go into the expert level with no hesitation. OK, so uh, my goal this year is to provide 52 classes. OK, so every Saturday this whole year, 52 classes and dive deep into not only the fundamentals, but slowly get into the more expert type stuff. OK, because a lot of times we're hesitant to to pick up certain projects because just because we're not used to it. OK, but if we train before. Before that big project right now, we feel a little bit more comfortable on taking on extra different types of projects. OK, also, sometimes you just want reassurance to make sure, hey, how are other people doing stuff? Because in embroidery, there's a thousand ways to do the same thing. All right. So sometimes you just want reassurance to make sure the way you're doing it is correct. Or maybe maybe somebody has a better way or you can help somebody do it a better way. OK, so I always say I don't have all the answers of embroidery. It's not like I know everything about embroidery, but what I do like to do, I like to experiment a lot. So we'll do a lot of that here in the class as well. OK, so anytime I want to I want to test something. OK, this is the perfect place to test anything about embroidery. All right. So today's. Uh, today's lesson is on real estate logos. OK, so we already know that real estate right last year. Booming. OK, booming the real estate business is super booming right now. And one thing about the real estate business is we all know somebody that's in the real estate business. OK, whether it's a family member, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, OK, or maybe you yourself are a realtor. OK, so everybody's connected to the real estate industry one way or another. OK, so definitely a good topic. And one thing about real estate, OK, real estate, you're going to meet anytime you meet or if you know a, a realtor, you know that they are marketing 24 seven. OK, the real estate business is all about marketing, marketing, not just their company, but themselves. OK, so what better way to market yourself? Than to, of course, have uh, very nice, clean embroidery products. OK, so uh, this is a niche OK, for those who who want to start the year you know, making money. I know that's always a big to do list, right? Come January, that's always a, com a big come uh, to do list is to gather clients and make money. OK, so the real estate business. OK, always a good place to get into. All right. So. Uh, let's see what I got here. I got uh, slides here. OK, so these are some of our more common logos here. All right. You've probably seen these logos. OK, um, one thing that we can say about the real estate business, just logos in general. OK, you'll notice here how we mentioned last week about sans serif. OK, we talked about sans serif and sans serif are these block type letters. OK, so you as you see here, some of the more popular type logos, they all have the box. OK, uh, this Century 21. This is their older logo. This is the one that I'm pretty sure all of us are real familiar with, the top one, the top uh, Century 21 logo. OK, we're familiar with that. But as you can see, OK, their new logo, which is down here, down below, as you can see, they went more basic. OK, they went more basic. Same thing with this Keller Williams. I don't know if you remember the old Keller Williams logo. It was more of a cursive type uh, logo. OK, notice. All right. I think they changed their logo about 10 years ago. OK, so notice how everything is becoming more block letter, sans serif type letters. And the reason why a lot of companies are going this route, the more block letters, because they want their logo to be seen anywhere. All right. From a billboard all the way down to your watch. OK, they want you to be able to recognize whatever logo 
whatever size they put it at. Okay. Uh, I think when logos are blocked like that, that's kind of an advantage to us as embroiderers because it makes life a little bit easier. Okay. So we'll talk about, we'll talk about how it becomes a little bit easier. So let's look into some of these logos that we have here. All right. So here, this is the old Century 21 logo. So same thing is block letter. And usually when you're looking at a logo, you're always looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly side of digitizing. Okay. There's not too much bad stuff here. Okay. Because the, the, the font, it's pretty thick. Okay. It, we don't, we're not working with very thin lines here. Okay, the only thing when you see a logo like this, and we'll go ahead, we'll digitize this logo because I think this logo is pretty cool. Okay, I like it. I don't like the fact that they don't use it anymore, but I like this logo. And you'll see why when I get into the details of digitizing this. But as you can see in your in your in the back of your brain, you have to start thinking the route you want to go to. Okay, because we're gonna do this whole century 21 without a cut in between okay we're gonna do it all in one shot but you got to start planning and you got to start looking the way you want to start uh digitizing this logo okay and then one thing that you see the the icon the house okay that is something that is very common actually let me take out this banner because yeah all right uh this icon the house the gold part uh it's very it's still common on a lot of logos okay a lot of logos that you'll see all right, I actually created a makeshift logo too. So you'll see uh, some common logos that you might see right now. Okay, um, so this is the new logo. This is the Century 21 here. And like I said before, this is kind of like an embroiderer's dream, this type of text, because it's very basic. All right, a sans serif type block letters. All right, these are, um, especially if, if you practice a lot, a lot on these, then anytime somebody sends you a logo, okay, you already have about 80% of that logo done, all right? And you could also recreate logos. If you're very familiar with this, okay, you're gonna, we're, we're gonna talk about how some of these logos, they're, they're uh, specifically made for the company, okay? So you can't just find the text, all right? A lot of times people wanna find the perfect text just so they could type it out, but sometimes it's easier for you just to digit, digitize it. All right, Coldwell Banker. So one thing that you see here is the C and the B. Okay, that is their monogram. Okay, very iconic monogram. All right, so same thing. What we want to do, we want to stitch this out all in one shot. Okay, um, let's see. So this Keller Williams, this is the newer, this is the newer logo that they have now. Okay, one thing about this logo here, notice the Williams. Okay, it gets very thin. All right, so now since you have your embroiderer thinking cap on, all right, you're looking at the KW, that's easy day right there. Okay, but when we're looking at the Williams portion, okay, now you start thinking, well, how thin can I get? All right, the Keller, the Keller, the bottom part, okay, pretty, pretty straightforward, but now we're looking at the Williams, it's looking a little thinner, okay? This is when, um, as, an, uh, as a digitizer, you start, you start, trying to see what you have to uh, adjust, okay? And then uh, let's see, EXP. So here, the only thing, uh, it looks very basic, all right? And it is very basic logo, okay? Just uh, one thing with that E, okay? One thing with that E, you just have to see how big can you get, okay? You don't wanna get too big where your sand stitches are becoming too big, all right? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna digitize those logos, all right? Remax, same thing, okay? You're gonna see, uh, I can't remember if this was an actual uh, font, okay? But same thing, If it's easier for you to redigitize this than it is to go look for that font, okay? So this one here is a very basic one. The only thing uh, that, we wanna, that we wanna hit on today is we wanna make sure that all of our lines match evenly, okay? Because the worst thing that you could have is, for example, the R being bigger than the E, and then the M being a different size, okay? The main thing when we're digitizing, okay? We always wanna make sure our heights are always uh, are always equal, all right? Uh, yeah, one thing, if you have a question, just put a Q before the question. That way, uh, when, we start digit uh, when we start embroidering, 
I'm going to go back and answer a lot of these questions while we're watching the stitch out. OK, right now, let me just go through the, the initial portion of the training. OK. Um, so here I, I, I just went on Canva and I created a, a makeshift logo. OK, these are logos that you're going to see right now. OK, for right now, everybody has like similar logos. All right. And if you've done uh, real estate, not just real estate, but any type of home services, OK, you're going to see that house. That silhouette of the house, all right, very common right now, all right. So a good thing to do is just you can create your own uh, your own icons, especially if you have Canva. You could go ahead and just practice on makeshift logos, all right. That way, okay, that way. I've already done a couple of of houses with just the roof on top of their logo, okay. So if you've done those type of uh, logos, you know what I'm talking about, right? A lot of these logos are very similar right now. Okay. Also, you can work on your um, on your lettering also. Okay, and then see which letters match which letters. That way, if you get a certain letter, you already know whether you have that font already or you have to go ahead and recreate it. All right, all right. Let's see. All right, that's good with the slides. And then one thing before we get into the digitizing portion, one thing that I want to show you. Let me see where are my slides. All right, one thing that I want to show you is something like this, okay? Uh, let's say you do get into a company, you start working with a specific company, and this goes with any company, all right? Any corporate business is going to have this type of stuff, all right? And this is their marketing, uh, like their, their marketing package, okay? Everything about their logo, everything about what color they use, the font uh, size, all right? All the details, all right? You can find this. So... Uh, I'll put the link later today on the description where you can see some of this, but this is some pretty cool stuff. This is when you're diving deep into a company. All right. That's this is like, hey, I wanna I wanna do business with this company. Now it's time for you to research and get into the into the nitty-gritty of uh the company's logo. All right. Uh let's see. All right, so this kind of just has the whole breakdown of the of the Company marketing, all the information on the marketing. All right. It tells you all the do's and don'ts. Okay. It tells you how you could position the logo with who, uh, with the with the realtor's name and all that. Okay. But one cool thing that I want to go and show you here, this is like business cards too. All right. So uh, this this type of information is very important on business cards because there are certain ways to do stuff. Okay, you can't just go ahead, throw logos, throw names, and just the way you think looks nice. Okay, you still have to follow a certain format. All right, but what I do want to show you, all right, is this page here. All right, it's telling you, all right, this is getting into the garment side. All right, it's telling you if you're going to make a hat, this is the proper way to do the hat. All right, so always a, a good, it's always good practice to go into their marketing kits and see how. What are what is the correct way to do their logo? Okay, um, there's always a uh, positioning and different stuff like that. All right, so pretty much every company has this type of stuff. They'll tell you uh, which fonts to use, colors. All right, so this one like here is telling you uh, Helvetica. Okay, how to go about and start your uh, your marketing stuff. All right, so. Coldwell Banker has one there, and then uh, I have one here also for Keller Williams. All right, same thing. It's telling you, it's giving you ratios, all right? And this here, I'm just bringing this up so you can get into the details of logos, okay? Because if you understand a company's logo, you know all the do's and don'ts, you speak that language of that organization, they're going to trust you more, okay? That way, if a unexperienced worker or an unexperienced realtor is asking you to do something, okay, you could tell them, hey, uh, according to your marketing materials, all right, this is how I would suggest you to do it, all right? It just makes you uh, look like you know what you're talking about, all right? So always good information. Anytime you're diving deep into a specific company, okay, you, you want to um, you want to make sure they know that you know what you're talking about, all right? All right, I'll put these uh, on the link later today in the description. Okay, I'm gonna flood the I'm gonna flood the 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 description on this page here with information that I found. 
okay that way we just share all this knowledge here okay and then usually i put a uh i put a google drive link to each one just so if i have any of my slide notes or any notes that i have okay i could share it with you guys out there too all right so let's see let's start we'll move this one all right all right let me just put there we go all right so let's go ahead let's look at some of these um logos that we have here all right so i got some of the logos that i want to work with today so these are the ones that we just talked about all right i want to go ahead and do some live digitizing all right and we're going to talk about some stuff to look out to look out for all right before we start digitizing you always want to just take a step back look at the logo okay and try to figure out your plan all right usually when they're complicated logos i like to print out the logos and kind of with a pencil come up with a game plan okay but right here i'll kind of i'll kind of go over it through a stitch all right uh real quick let's look at some of these uh questions that we got here today let me see bam bam all right good morning from texas hey good morning gary all right we got uh ohio in the house toledo ohio cold here too yep it's cold everywhere i'm not used to this cold so um great will all this info today class work with chroma lux software i work with this one with uh wilcom 4.5 all right but i try to keep it very basic with the most basic uh features that way it's applicable to every software all right so um everything that uh that we do here you should definitely be able to do it on your lux all right uh good morning from compton Hey Hector, what's up? All right, we got everybody. It looked like we got a packed house. All right, good morning. All right, we got Kenneth. Good morning. All right, let's see. Uh, I was working on smaller stars yesterday. It was a little hard. I used Chroma lights. All right. All right, we got a star right here. We got a star right here. So we'll we'll touch on a star right here when we get there. Definitely, stars are always fun to work with. All right. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's start this. Let's go in full, full mode right here. All right, all right. Let me just answer this one right here. Can I use PE Design 11? All right, uh, we'll 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 figure that out right now. All right, if you have this, uh, all right. First, I got my logo here. I got all my logos. I'm just gonna dim it, so every artwork should have a uh, should have something so you could dim your artwork. That's just so we can see a uh, transparent, all right? So we know what we're working on top. And then we want to lock this, okay? So whatever your hotkey is, it's K for uh, Wilcom, okay? You want to lock it, all right? Um, as long as you're, this is what I work with, the column stitch. Pretty much every popular uh, software has the column stitch, all right? So um, as long as you could go uh, from one side to another and create your sand stitch, all right, we should be all right. All right. All right. Uh, let's talk about a game plan, okay? Let's let's have a game plan right here, and uh, let me show you kind of like let's let's start analyzing this design right here. Okay. So looking at this design here, first you always want to make sure we're sized correctly. Okay. So here on Wilcom, I push the letter M, and my measuring tool comes out. All right and same thing every software has a measuring tool all right if you push the 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 control button it'll keep you at a perfect zero degree okay that way you could see okay so we're at about 2.5 inch all right so that's pretty good that's where i want to work at right now all right it's usually important to know and to verify that you're working on the correct size okay you don't want to work on something too small or something too big where everything's going to throw everything out of place all right. Um, okay. Let me let me get this one. What is a hot key? Very good question. All right. Let's see. Let's get into this mode real quick. All right. Hot key is a key that I could just push on my keyboard, so I don't have to go looking for. So in order to get that measuring tool, 
Okay, in order to get that measuring tool, if I didn't use the hotkey letter M, I would have to come in at view and go scroll down and push this one, measure M. And it's telling you what your hotkeys are. Okay, so all these letters on the right, telling you. So that way you can get there. All right, good question right there. All right, let's go ahead. Let's kind of go over this game plan for this. All right, so real quick, this is not the actual digitizing part. This is just me going over the game plan right now. OK, um, really, this is the route that I want to go. OK, I want to go uh, here. I want to take my C, create my C. OK, I'm going to stop here, jump, continue on the E. OK, continue on the E, stop here. OK, and when I'm talking about stop, I'm talking about jump because we are not going to introduce any cuts on this design here. Okay, I'm gonna jump here. I have this little small gap right here. Okay, I don't mind this little gap, it's very small. Okay, so if I jump from right here to right here, it's, it's okay. If you wanna continue from here, from this part of the E and go to this N, that's fine too. But I just wanna have a smooth route all the way out to my E. Okay, and then from here down, we're gonna come up here, create this part of the N. All right, so this is just me kind of thinking out loud. Okay, this should have been a, a straight line. Okay, this is just me thinking out, out loud in my brain, coming up with a game plan. Okay, uh, same thing here. I'm going to come up with a line here. All right, come up here. And then I'm going to jump to here. Okay, continue this. I'm gonna do all this in one shot here. All right, then make this leg here. Jump down here. Okay, I like to make my jump stitches here on the bottom. Uh, all right, cool question right here. Uh, how do you create these lines? All I'm doing right now, I'm not doing the actual digitizing. I'm just creating a run stitch right here. All right, everybody has a run stitch. All right, no matter what software you have, you definitely have a run stitch. All right, so I'm just, this is just me creating a plan right now, okay? This is just for, you can visualize, because when I start digitizing, I might start moving fast, and that way you know what I'm doing, okay? I'm gonna create this uh, leg here, this little R, piece of the R, and then drop down, make the Y, come down, okay? Then I'm gonna jump here from my Y, I'm going to jump on this part. You want to find the closest point here to here. Then I'm going to create my number two. OK. And then I'm going to down here, I'm going to jump to the one. OK. And then complete the one. All right. So that's the game plan right now to create this Century 21 right here. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bam, bam, bam. Let's see this question. I just bought the Wilcom 4.5 decorating. How good is it? It's the best of the best. All right. If you got that one, all right, you just got to put in the hours uh, just so you can get used to everything. Okay. It's going to take a while to get used to. All right. Uh, let me fix all this stuff. All right. Uh, where's my list? Okay, this one here. So let's delete what I just did, these, these run stitches. That was just there for an example, all right? So let's go ahead, let's start digitizing, okay? I have, a, I have a certain condition that I, that I put myself, okay? When I'm digitizing, okay? So if you notice here, I have the column A stitch, which is um, the column stitch, okay? Uh, make sure you get familiar with the column stitch, all right? Very useful, okay? Uh, of course, we have these other stitches. These are the more uh, uh, advanced type stitches, which I definitely love. But just to keep it very basic, I'm going to keep it uh, on the column stitch. Okay. Uh, one one condition that I put myself that I like to give myself. Hold on. Let's go screen here. All right. Uh, one condition that I like to give myself, I like to, actually, I could keep it on this screen here. 
uh, one condition that I like to give myself, I like to use the least clicks possible. All right. That's kind of like a challenge that I give myself. All right. The reason why I like to, uh, a couple of reasons why I like to use the least clicks possible. First, it makes you move faster. Okay. Uh, second, you introduce unnecessary stitches. All right. That way the program does its job and is calculating stitches the most efficient way. Every time you introduce a click, you are forcing the software to make stitches on that click. Okay, so only introduce nodes when possible, when necessary. All right, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. All right, all right, somebody wrote here, uh, what's up, Craig? So you need to run a stitch first, then start. No, no, no. I was just running that run stitch as an example to show you uh, the direction flow that I'm going. Okay, that's, that's all I'm doing. So as you notice, I just deleted that uh, run stitch. I was just giving you a game plan of my whole route, okay? That's all I was doing, okay? So as you can see, I have deleted that, all right? Now we're gonna start the actual di uh, digitizing. All right, very good questions, all right? Uh, all right, so first thing first, we're gonna start this C right here, okay? So this C, um, let's go ahead, let's get the column stitch, all right? So of course, our C is gonna start here, okay? Every stitch, the first two clicks, they're always, uh, they're always uh, straight lines. I don't want to say straight lines, but you can't put a curve right here, okay? Because you're going from one stitch to the next. They have to, yes, it does have to be a straight line, okay? So these first two stitches are always straight lines, okay? So notice here, in order to get a perfect uh, line, a perfect zero degree line, I push down control. Okay, and then let me change to uh, metrics here. All right, so I click here, push down control. I know I have a perfect zero degree line. So that's my first click there. Okay, that's my first sense. Uh, that's my first angle here coming out here. Okay, now this is the trick here in order to get the least amount of stitches or clicks. Okay, what you want to do, this perfect C, I like C's. Okay. You want to find the apex, okay? The apex is the highest point here, okay? So you're going here, you're going up, you're going up, you're going up. You stop, now you're going down, you're going down, you're going down, okay? So what you want to do, you want to put a round, a round click. So for Wilcom, it's right click, okay? The, you got to see what on your software what it is, okay? So you're looking for the apex. I'm putting a round click there. And then I'm looking for the apex up here, okay? So apex, what I'm talking about is I'm going up, I'm going up, 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 and now I'm going down, 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 down. So you wanna find that point where you went from going up to going down, so here, okay? And remember, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, just be in the ballpark, okay? So you got one there, then you go here, same thing. You're looking for the apex here. It's a round stitch, go here, round. Okay, and then you do the same thing down here. Okay, so we go down, you look for the lowest point. Okay, this is a round click there. Okay, now you go up here and we could just kind of go bam, bam, enter. All right, we got our C now. All right, so let me change this color so we could see. All right, so as you can see, let's see is perfectly rounded here, okay? And I use the least amount of clicks possible, all right? So if we click on it and you push H on Wilcom, which is the reshape, okay? Reshape is one of the most powerful uh, features in any digitizing software, all right? The reshape, because what the reshape can do, okay? You could grab these nodes. These nodes are the clicks that I made. So notice that on this bottom side, I made one click here, one click here, one click here, okay? If you kind of didn't get it right, you could move these nodes, all right? According to how you want it, all right? All right, so let's see, bam, okay? So we got our letter C, all right? So we're almost there, all right? And once you get the practice of this, you're knocking out these letters without even thinking about it. All right, so the main thing, all right, so make sure later today in this whole week, 
All right, it'd be a good practice. I like this logo because this logo has a lot of uh, has a lot of uh, obstacles that you gotta go uh, get around with. All right, we'll see some obstacles right now. All right. Um, all right, let's go. Let's continue. So now we're gonna jump, and we're gonna start on this side of the E. All right. So I'm just gonna start here. Here. Okay. Remember these first two is always your first straight line stitch. You always start with straight line stitches. All right, and then all what we're doing, we're gonna go straight here to this corner because we're about to make a left-hand turn after that corner, right? So you always make a click where you're making a turn. And then we could go here. Since this E is going underneath the R, you don't have to have this E as a perfect corner here. You just have to have it tucked in under this R here. Okay, now we start turning, okay? The E is about to start turning, okay? Here, same thing, I'm looking for the lowest point, all right? Of course, it's not always gonna be uh, the least click uh, possible, okay? There's no prize if you don't, if you have the least clicks. It's just, uh, it's just something you wanna be looking out for, all right? So here, I probably I probably don't need a click here, but I'm still gonna put a click here just to start forming up my uh, my circle my circular shape here. Okay, so we're going round. So I'm clicking uh, right click to keep it round. All right, now here round round, and then here the last stitch is always straight stitch. All right. All right, let's look at that. All right, so my E, and then you just want to take a double, a double look at this H. Okay, you could analyze, make sure your stitches are looking the way you want it to look. Okay, so you could pull this out a bit, tad bit. All right, just follow the lines real quick. Okay, here. Remember, here we're zoomed in at two thousand percent. Nobody's looking at your embroidery at two thousand percent. All right, so don't don't. Don't think you have to have it, all right, down to the last millimeter, tenth of a millimeter, all right? Okay, because here, this is the actual size here. So I'm at a one, at a one, one here, okay? All right, now, bam, okay, we have the C and the E, all right? All right, let's see this. Uh, I really like the idea of the least amount of nodes, all right? It, that's the best practice, and it, it's going to make your work look very clean. And if you know if in the stitch out, if something goes wrong, you could kind of pinpoint and see which node is acting up, okay? Sometimes you have to adjust certain nodes. You know which node is the point of uh, uh, which point you have to check, all right? So very good uh, comment there, all right? Um, Let's see, where do you know where to start the line, for example? Uh, I just started from left to right, all right, left to right. That first example, that run stitch, don't worry about it, right? All right, that one was just, I was just showing you the path that I'm going at right now. All right, let's continue on the end. All right, let's collect this. All right, this end, very, uh, it's just a rectangle up here, okay? We're thinking shapes now. We're thinking this leg here is just a rectangle. So we're gonna do one click here, okay? I hold down control to get a perfect line down here. Okay, now let me show you some magic right here. If you hold down control again, guess what? You're gonna get a straight line from top, from bottom to top, okay? So here, sometimes you're trying to find a perfect line here. If you push control, you get a perfect line. Okay, so you push click here, you look for your second line, push down control, same thing, okay? You get a perfect square, you just have to line up the top portion, okay? Push enter, all right, now we have the N, okay? And all the details, where it's coming, where it's going, we're gonna do all that towards the end part, okay? Towards the end, like E-N-D, not end. All right, now we're going to make this leg here, Okay, we want our stitches to kind of fall in like this. 
All right, so bam, we're going go on a curve. All right, here you want to find where does your stitch start going straight, okay? Because right here it just drops down straight. So right here it, it goes straight. So you're going to put a left click, which is a straight click. And then here, same thing, push control, you get a perfect line down the middle. But I'm going to open it up a tad bit. Same thing here, you could just push control, you're getting a perfect straight down. All right, see, bam, all right. Uh, this part of the leg is going to be tucked under, all right, but we're going to take care of all those details towards the end. All right, let's see this uh, comment here. For future classes, baby, share the files you might be using when we can work with you as you go. You, oh, okay, yeah, that's a perfect idea. All right, uh, 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 I could definitely do that. All right, but for right now, what you want to do, all right, we're just taking our time going over it because what you don't want to do while I'm, while I'm digitizing, you don't kind of want to zone out, okay? Zone out and then miss kind of like what I just did, all right? But yeah, that is a good idea. I might start doing that, all right? All right, let's, let's do this T real quick. I'm going to start moving a little faster, okay? So this is rectangle, rectangle, and then we're going to go there, all right? So bam. All right, I'm just gonna go kind of up to here, up to here, bam. And then from here, creating the second part of the T. Okay, remember I'm getting my perfect squares by pushing down, holding down control. All right, now I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start a little pass. I wanna go under this N, holding down control to get that perfect line. All right, now, Okay, still get that perfect line with holding down control. Same thing here. Okay, now we're going to start dipping down. So you want to click all the way till you start making that turn. Okay, so about right here, we start making that turn. And then here we drop down and you want to find where do you start making that turn? Start making that turn right here. Okay, now we're going to look for the apex, the lowest point here round round and then we're going into our leg all right so as you can see it's not perfect right so we'll fix it right here uh the reshape tool all i'm going to do is add a node make this rounded bring this here bring this up here all right um, let's move this angle we want our angles to kind of start going in the in the path of this next leg here. All right. All right. That's cool there. Okay, now let's make this leg. You can always take from other places that you just digitize. So if I have this T here, you could just copy paste. Uh, Wilcom is just a right click. I could just right click control to keep that leg straight and then let go. Okay. And then just lift this up right here. Bam. I got a free one there. Okay. So that's my U there. Then my R, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to duplicate. Okay. If you don't have this key where I'm just right clicking and pulling it down. Okay. Let me show you how. All right. So that was very convenient. Right. But if you don't have that, okay, there's always other ways to get certain stuff. So you could go uh, to edit, duplicate, okay? Everybody has a duplicate, okay? It just makes you move faster. All right, and then, um, hold on. Click on this, edit, duplicate, okay? And then you just click and you should have it right there. All right, so there's different ways to recreate lines, all right? Especially when you're doing text, you're going to be doing a lot of the same uh, shapes uh, over and over and over and over. All right. All right, so now we are here. Uh, here we have this little, we could actually make this a little tad bit smaller. Okay, it's just little fine adjustments. Uh, here we have this part of the R, okay? 
Um, you're going to have these type of uh, letters where it's, it's kind of like a, this uh, game time decision, how you want to digitize this little piece, okay? Uh, what I want to do, I want to kind of keep uh, in line with my stitches. So my stitches are going from left to right. And then when I get to this part of the Y, it's going to go from left to right too. So I kind of want to keep that same thing here. So let's go, uh, let's kind of design it this way. All right. T, H. All right. So remember, there's a thousand ways to digitize stuff. Uh, this is this is just a little piece of the R. So I want the stitches to kind of go in line with the surrounding stitches. All right. So let's see. All right. So it looks kind of weird right now. Okay. But this is going to go tucked under this Y here. All right. So this R here, I'm just going to copy this, bring this here. All right. Bam. All right. And this is just using a shape and, and and I'm using the reshape tool to kind of uh, make it uh, adjust to this. So I push H, I could add a node here, add a node here, add a node here, bring this in. All right, so now it kind of fits in here. All right, this is going under this leg here, all right. All right, let's see. Uh, this is a good question right here. Sometimes I just kind of uh, sc scan the questions. And um, this is a good one. Sorry to ask, but are the fonts the best way to begin with embroidery business? Yes. Okay. Uh, what we are doing here right now, this is, uh, I won't say uh, the most advanced stuff in embroidery. Okay. But you definitely want to uh, work with fonts, understand what fonts are. And you're going to have your favorite fonts. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna see fonts that you definitely hate. Okay, but yes, you want to work with the built-in fonts just to see how everything works. Okay. Uh, all right, let's let's kind of knock this one out real quick. These are just a rectangle part of the of the Y. We're just going from one corner to another corner. All right. The goal the goal today is to use the least amount of stitches possible. All right. So now, bam. Okay. Now we're gonna make our two, the number two. All right, bam. We're gonna look for that apex. Where's the highest point? It's right here. Where's the highest point? It's right here. Same thing here. Where's the furthest? Bam, bam. And then where does it start going straight? It starts going straight here. Where do I start going straight? I start going straight about here. Okay, and then create this guy, okay. Bam. Okay, now let's just quickly adjust this guy. We could put a H there, H here. And I'm just gonna kind of bring them in a little. Because notice my stitches are going in this and it's slowly forming into my next piece. Okay, so make the next stitch. Bam. Create, let's create a little bigger. Actually, H, I could bring this back out a little because it's going to push inside a bit. Okay, so yep. All right, let's create the next one. Okay, we're just going to, all we're doing is creating shapes. Okay, I'm just going to drop down a bit so you can see it's like a, it has a little slope down to it. That's fine. Okay, I just want to cover that part there. Okay, so I just introduced a, a, an extra an extra click there, but that's fine. Okay, and then bam. All right, so we are looking like this. Okay, I can actually bring it down a tad bit. H, uh, H, bring down this node. Okay, that's the good thing about leaving a minimum amount of nodes is that when you when you uh, edit, it's easier to edit something with the least amount of nodes. All right. That's why, uh, just on a side note, that's why you don't want to auto-digitize. 
because if you ever auto digitize something, you'll see that auto digitize gives you millions of nodes. All right, it's nearly impossible to uh, to edit something when uh, you auto digitize. All right, that's kind of like worst case scenario. You auto digitize. All right, bam. Let's see. All right. Okay, now we're just going to work out the details of the order, but let's just do this, the house part real quick. All right, is this going to be up for the live? Yes, it is going to be up for the live. All right. Uh, and I'm also going to add extra notes. So by the end of today, I should add uh, like my, uh, the notes that I had in the beginning of the class, just so I can share with you guys. All right, box, box. Let's do the box here. This one, you're just making shapes, right? So we already saw how to make straight lines. Okay, this one here can't get any easier. Okay, you cannot get any easier here. Sometimes here, when you have these little uh, these lines, sometimes you might get a a roof or a makeshift house with very narrow lines. Sometimes you you can go a little beyond the the design just to get a clean, thick line, okay? Because you don't want it to be too thin where it kind of disappears. Okay, uh, let's go bam. Bam here. Okay, we're just creating shapes right here. All right. Can't get any easier than this. All right, this, I think this part is the easy part, all right? Uh, just tracing over is kind of like the easy part, but this is the hard part here, or this is the part that requires uh, brain power, the, this part that's coming up right now. All right. Might want to move your screen thing. We're cut off. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me. I'm like hogging up the screen right here. All right, cool. Actually, let's go full mode right here. All right. Thank you for letting me know that. All right. Um, so this part here is what I consider the brain power portion. Okay. This is where you as a digitizer, as an embroiderer, or as an analyzer, because sometimes you're not digitizing something, but you still have to analyze a design, okay? That's why it's good practice. Even though you send out your designs to somebody, okay, you still have to know the digitizing part because if something doesn't go right, you have to know what to adjust, okay? The last thing you want to do is troubleshoot something that's not broken, okay? Maybe uh, something's wrong in the design, and now you're troubleshooting something on the machine okay so now you're going to work double because you're going to break something on the machine and you still haven't fixed the actual problem all right so always very important to know even though you don't digitize you still have to know digitize all right all right let's see let's let's uh now it's just a matter of placing these in order okay so we want to go c first then we want to go the e the N, N, T, okay, T, bam. I'm just checking, making sure my order is right, okay. Uh, especially when you copy and paste, some of some of the stuff might be out of order, all right. But we're looking good. And then the house, this house, this house. All right, now, let me just make sure my underlays. Okay, underlays, uh, that's always a big question. What underlay should I use? It all depends what you're gonna stitch on. Okay, the more thicker uh, your garment, the more underlay you might need. Now, the thing is, when you're working with text, you don't wanna put too much underlay because those underlays might start sticking out. Okay, you wanna hide your underlay. Okay, so right now we're at a, uh, we're at a uh, 2.5 of total distance, but, Let's see our stitches are about, all right, this one's pretty big, okay. Let's see this house. These are like our thinner ones, two millimeters. Okay, we're not too small. We don't really have any small stitches, okay. Also, when you're looking at your design information, so I'm here on the side, uh, it'll tell you uh, stitching, okay. Uh, every software has this too, all right. It has that the analyzing of your worksheet. Okay, it'll tell you what is your what is your longest stitch. Okay, maximum stitch 5.8. All right, so I'm pretty safe. All right, uh, minimum stitch 0.3. Okay, that's all right. It's probably somewhere 
somewhere uh, tucked in somewhere. All right, but we, we have to analyze always that type of stuff. All right, so for underlays, I'm going to put a center run, then a zigzag. Okay, I'm cool with that. All right, I'm cool with that. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead. Let's start the details of this. Okay, so uh, right now, when I push H, okay, when I push H, notice I have a green box and I have a red X or cross, red uh, cross. Okay, that is my start, my stop. Okay, I do not like to start right here at the very end of the text. All right, I bring it in here a little bit inside, more in the middle, just because it's gonna it's gonna create a uh, a tie-in. Okay, like a knot, a little mini knot. Okay, if you put it on the side, sometimes that knot kind of shows, kind of sneaks out. Okay, so if you tuck it inside here, it's gonna hide it a little bit better. All right, so I start here, and I already know, okay, because I planned my uh, my total uh, pathway. Okay, I want to end here on this top side of the C, not on the top side, but on the bottom side, the top portion of the bottom side. Okay, so I want to stop here. Okay, so that's good. Okay, now with my E. Okay, my E, push H. Okay, I definitely want to start here. Continuation. And I want to end down here. So that's fine there. Now, what I want to tell my machine or what I want to tell the software, I want to tell the software, let's see. Okay, it, it's not, it hasn't introduced the cut here. So that's fine. Okay, but usually if you have a cut here and you don't want it to cut, Okay, you go connectors. You could you could say trim after. No, I don't want to trim. Okay, we're just going straight to the next letter. All right. So always you always want to make sure if the if the if you if you want a cut, introduce a cut. But if you don't want to cut, you could take away cuts like that. All right. All right, let's go, bam, bam, bam. All right, we are going, so we ended here, okay? Notice this line here. This is telling us we are jumping from here to the next letter, okay? There's no there's no triangle, so there's no cut, okay? Let's see. Uh, yeah, because I have triangles here, okay? That triangle, uh, when it shows it, show connectors. Let me see here, show connectors. All right, so there's a setting. If, if you don't see that setting where it shows you your cuts, all right, uh, pretty much most all software should have that where it shows you if you're introducing a cut or not, all right? For us, it's show connectors, okay? It's giving you information. So it's jumping from here to the next letter, all right? And bam, bam. Okay, here, this N, I actually want this N to be stitched out at the same time. So it's not like I want this leg to stitch first and then this part to stitch second. I want this to stitch out, okay? So last week, we talked about branching, okay? We kind of got into the details of branching, all right? Branching is just combining two objects. So right here, I highlighted two objects on my right, on my two objects. And I want to tell the machine how I want it to stitch out, okay? So I push, my hotkey is letter I for branching. Okay, branching, one of the most powerful tools in all of embroidery. Okay, I'm going to tell it, hey, I want to start here, the closest point to this jump. Okay, I'm going to tell you I want to start here, and I want it to end here, the closest point to this T. Bam, right there, all right? So now let's see. Let me hide everything. Let's see what just happened, okay? Let's put this on the replay. All right, let me slow this down a bit. All right, so what happens, it's going to create the end all together. Okay, so I put my underlay. That's underlay right there. Okay, it's going to form that part. It formed that small piece that connects it. And now it's combining everything clean. So now it looks like one clean design. All right, 
So you're going to notice how clean that end looks. All right, let's show everything back up. Unhide all. All right, and then definitely Control S. All right, I actually haven't done it yet. Control S is to save. That's pretty much most all designing software like Photoshop and anything. Um, Adobe is also Control S. All right, now we get to here to our T. Okay. Uh, right now we are moving in slow motion, okay? Because I'm kind of showing you what my brain is thinking. But the more practice you get, you're not even thinking about a lot of this stuff. You're just doing it second nature, all right? But you have to put in the practice, okay? So uh, make sure you find. Uh, I like to find logos that I'm that that people are used to seeing, okay? Just for my own personal projects, okay? So I have a bunch of stuff. So. I always feel like a big company, okay? This, this is just on a side note. I always feel like a big company is gonna hit up our shop and tell us, hey, can you uh, can you design this uh, logo for us, all right? And I'm already gonna be 10 steps ahead of them, okay? I'm gonna already have samples and everything from the time that I had, okay? So that's the same thing. Uh, I think it's very important to have uh, big goals like, you know, thinking that that one big company is going to hit you up, but you got to be prepared when they do hit you up, all right? And as you can see, a lot of the big companies, they don't have outrageous logos, okay? Sometimes uh, if you're doing outrageous logos and it's giving you headaches, okay, I say that that's not where the money's at. The money's at very basic corporate type logos, okay? Of course, it's always cool to do the more crazier stuff, all right? Always fun. Okay, but here, nice, clean text logos, all right? That's what I like to do, okay? That's what I like to specialize in. All right, but let's continue here. So I wanna start here. I'm gonna continue from here, jump here, and then I wanna jump up there. So bam, bam, and then I wanna get there, okay? So I'm gonna select these three items, okay? I'm gonna treat this all as one item right here, okay? Um, so, branching okay letter i my hotkey is i okay but let's see uh usually when i remember the hotkeys i forget where to find them okay right here under arrange you'll see branching okay letter i all right so it's going to ask me down here on my bottom left is giving me directions okay it's telling me what to do it's saying hey enter your entry point so i'm going from the n entering here the t then it's asking me where's my exit point. So I want to exit here on this part of the leg. Okay. Look at it real close. Uh, look at it. Okay. Exactly like how I want it. All right. And now we continue with the this part here. Okay. Notice it's introducing a cut. Okay. We're all about no cuts. Okay. So we're going to go reshape and we're going to tell them, hey, we want to start right here. Where this cuts at okay now notice that cut just disappeared all right now i want it to end down here on the bottom okay and notice that it stops here is now it's jumping to the next letter all right so we're just going from letter to letter all right now here we want to combine these three yeah we want to combine these three objects and to one design, we're gonna branch it. So letter I, put the entry point. So it's jumping from here to here. So I'm putting it right here. And where's it gonna end? I want it to end down here below. Okay, now we select this part. H, reshape, I want it to start. So notice here, I have my cut. I wanna remove that cut by starting here. And I want to end close to this two right here. Okay, so it's gonna end here. Okay, so right now it's telling me that it's gonna cut and we're about to remove that right now. Okay, so now we go with the number two. Now we wanna make these two objects together. So it's branching, start here where this cut was at, end here. Okay, so that cut left, bam. Now let's talk about this one. H, reshape, I wanna start, yeah, I wanna start here. And I want to end, bam, I don't want to end here because there's too much stuff going on. I'll rather it just end right here also. I'll end in the bottom. 
Okay. Notice that this triangle is still here. Okay. Actually, let me do something. Tie-ins, tie-offs. I want this type of tie-offs. Okay. There's two types of tie-off. There's like the X type tie-off or there's the line tie-off. All right. The line tie-off is more cleaner. All right. So you can always choose that one. Okay. Now, Let me remove this cut. So I have to manually tell it, hey, I don't want this cut. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, trim after, I'm gonna take that off and bam, it disappeared. Okay, so now we're looking at our design information. It is telling us we have four trims, all right? Uh, I forgot what we started with, but it, it was definitely a number very high. All right, now let me just take off these trims here. So here, H, we want to start here. We want to end there. Yep, that's fine. We want to H, we want to start here now. Take away this cut. Okay, took away that cut. Bam, bam. And here, that's fine. And then H. Okay, bam. All right. And then I'm going to manually remove this cut here. Remove cut. And you could always keep the cuts on, but I just want to make sure that we're moving fast. When we're uh, embroidering, trim after, bam. All right, so we are on two cuts, okay? So we are on two cuts right here, all right? So bam, we are looking good. Let's see. Let's replay this. Uh, let's see. Or, bam. All right, so we always want to replay because, you know, stuff happens, right? Crazy stuff happens that you missed. And we want to just make sure whatever we whatever we program is exactly what's happening. We want to make sure no triangles are popping up out of nowhere. Remember, triangles, uh, cuts are triangles. They are not our friends. Okay, we do not want unnecessary uh, cuts. Okay, every design. Okay, so every design. That's another condition that we want to have is least cuts possible, all right? And then the end, so it's making the end all in one shot, okay? Just like we replayed it before, all right? So I already know that one's good. Speed it up a bit. Okay, so it's going to make this part of the T. It's putting down the underlay. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, it's doing the, the leg. Now it's doing this part. Okay, exactly like how we designed it. Okay, that's the main thing. You don't want any surprises when we're digitizing. Okay, so now it's doing this part, the R and the first part of the Y. Okay, and we're just taking it piece by piece. You don't wanna branch everything all in one shot. Okay, so now it's gonna stop here. Bam, jump to the two. It's gonna create this two. Okay, I like putting the underlay, especially when there's connectors, because it's going to tie this number two all together. Okay, it, it prevents us from having uh, little gaps and holes on the connectors. All right, now it's jumping, it's making the one. All right, so everything looks good. This next one, this next side, house should be pretty straightforward. Okay, bam, bam, bam. All right, so we are looking good. All right, let's check out our size, metric US, um, 2.5 inches. All right, looks good. All right, uh, actually, I'm ready to stitch this out. All right, I'm going to, let's check some questions. I know I kind of I kind of went away from the questions for a bit. All right, uh, we'll answer them when I start stitching. All right, uh, Bam, bam. Let's see this question here. Linda, question, the marketing you are talking about for logo, is that just public information or is that something you get when? That's all public information. All right. That's all information that I, bam, let's see. Hold on. Uh, this is all information that you could find online. Okay. So in the description, I'm going to put some of this stuff that I found. Okay. It's, it's just stuff that's, that you Google. All right. And then every year, uh, Every year they'll put out a new marketing. This is just companies in general, all right? But uh, yes, some companies, uh, 
it's harder to find information. So if you do find somebody that's well connected into that company, all right, the more information you have. All right, so very good question. Uh, can I use PE design? I, I think I took care of that question. Well, about, all right. Uh, oh, yeah, I went all the way back here. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, good question right here. Does that digiting software come with the embroidery machine or you have to? Yes, this is definitely, uh, I have to purchase this separate, okay? This uh, will come. Uh, will come, yeah, it's on its own. All right. Uh, usually, certain uh, companies they have uh, digitizing uh, software that goes with that one. Okay, but I went. I don't know. Something took me to Wilcom when I first started, and I love Wilcom. All right, very easy to work with. All right. Um, all right. We got Boricua sewing and crafts. Just wondering, after you remove all the cuts, do you end up having jump stitches that you need to cut after? Uh, if, all right, if the jumps are too big or the jumps are uh, vis visible, like on the house, that last one that's going down, that's going to be very visible, right? If you do, if you do, uh, if they're very visible, yes, you definitely want to cut them. And what you want to do is actually make them a little bigger than what they are. So that way it's easier to cut them. Okay. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to keep it like this. All right. Actually, I'll actually, um, I'll actually make this jump stitch on the bottom one and we'll cut that one. All right. Yeah. Good question. So, uh, if, if, uh, if a jump stitch looks too, it's too obvious there, what I usually like to do, I bring the text a little closer, uh, try to kind of, um, blend that jump stitch so it's not so see-through okay but if you have to cut it then uh, you want to make sure it's long enough so you can at least get to it be able to cut it all right so good question there all right um all right let me um let me know if you guys want me to stitch this out real quick i'll stitch it out right now bam bam let me just adjust this bottom one. So uh, what I'm going to do, H, I'm going to make, I'm going to, oh, wait. Yeah, I'm going to start it here to make this jump stitch a little bigger, okay? Because if it's coming from, from here to here, it's going to be harder to cut, all right? So this is uh, this is to answer your question, uh, Boricua Sewing Crafts, all right? Um, in order for me to make that cut, it's easier if it's if the jump stitch is bigger than if it's very small. Okay, if it's very small, it's hard for me to get into it. So instead of so what I did, I purposely moved it from here, and I'm gonna move that start from here. All right, just so I could get a better axis. Now, okay, very that was actually a very good question because there's a second part to it here too. What you want to make sure if you're going to cut this line. You want to make sure you have a tie-in or a tie-off here and a tie-in here, which means you are making a knot. Okay, so here it already I could already see that it has a tie-in or a tie-out because these stitches are real close to each other. But if you notice that there's no tie-off, you could always put always tie-off. And then here it's the opposite. You want to tie in here. So you're going to put always tie in. Okay. And we don't want to cut. I mean, we don't want to trim after off. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So we'll when we stitch this out, we'll we'll see this this one obvious here. We have a jump stitch here. It's very minimum. Okay. You got to be standing next to somebody so close for them to see that. All right. So we're we're not going to worry about that. Okay. If they're just jump stitch that we're not going to cut, you don't have to tie in tie out. But you have to tie in tie out if you're going to cut a stitch. All right, so very important stuff right there. All right, so let me get this, um, let me get my GoPro ready. Let me turn on the, the embroider machine, okay? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on replay real quick. While I turn on the equipment. Actually, hold on, let me save this quick.
Uh, hold on, give me one sec. Like so many buttons right here. All right. Um, let me just save this real quick. Let me put in my. Uh, got the USB. All right. What time is it? Oh, 915. All right. It would be good for me just to uh, digitize this whole. Uh, all the logos and then print them and then stitch them all out. What I might do, uh, what I might do is later today, just uh, screen record me digitizing all the logos. Okay, that way, um, if you, if you want to see me do all of them, okay, that way uh, I don't have to explain everything. Okay, because that's really what's the time-consuming part is me stopping. But if you see me, uh, if you see me just start from beginning to end without even uh, explaining or thinking anything, okay? I kind of like, kind of get into a flow and you'll see um, you'll see how everything works out. So by me talking about it in this beginning part, you, you'll kind of have an idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing, all right? So I'll probably do that later today, okay? Because I do have about uh, six other logos, let me see. Yeah, I have the CB, K, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I might do that later today. All right, so let me save this real quick. Um, put it right there. Uh, export. Bam, thumb drive. Week two. Nine, nine, bam. All right. Actually, let me turn on the GoPro. Give me one sec. All right, I'm just loading up the file real quick. Uh, and then I'll put the GoPro right here. Let me see. Bam, bam. All right. Uh, since it's a 2.5 design, I could just use the 5.5 Mighty Hoop. All right, let me uh, got to connect the GoPro. All right, let me see if we're good here. Uh, Barb, which GoPro do you use for videoing? I have a GoPro 8. They already have the 10. They have the 9 and the 10, but this one is more than good. All right, this one's good. Uh, let's see this one. Bevy Jean, thank you, because I really like that you finished the stitch out. Yeah, I mean, that's the full thing. I like to show the full three, the uh, three triangles, all right? It's uh, digitizing, hooping, and uh, embroidery, right? Because if you only show one thing, you really don't see the whole picture, all right? So always good to, to see them. Uh, yeah, thank you, Boricua. Hit the like button, everybody. Okay, for sure. All right, let's see this. Thanks a lot. 
Also, do you use Wi-Fi on the machine? No, I don't use Wi-Fi. I'm like super old school. I just use USB. All right. Um, all right, let's go. Bam, bam. Let me see if you got a good view here. All right. Yep. Let me add some light real quick. My light's right here. A little dark. All right, a little better. All right. Um, we could use the 5.5. Let's see. Let me go a little bigger on this. All right, bam. Looking good right there. All right. So sampling, right? Um, what I would, what I would uh, suggest always have a, a big amount of cutaway and a good amount of twill all right i go to i use a uh, uh, twill usa all right but the bigger uh you buy okay the better it is for sampling stuff out okay where you don't have to think about it and this is the best way to sample something out okay uh definitely the real real best way is to sample something with the material that you're going to use okay so for example if we're going to do polo shirts you definitely want to have some polo shirts um the material the actual material that you're going to stitch on all right what i usually do if i have a big project coming up what i usually do is i'll buy an extra polo shirt just to do all my samples on that polo shirt okay because once you got it once you have the the, the design and everything uh, perfectly dialed in, okay? The price of that polo shirt is nothing, okay? The price of that polo shirt is nothing, all right? So we'll start here at this corner just so I could save space and continue with my other. All right, let's see, bam, okay? So very basic, okay, very basic. Okay, uh, hooping. That is one of the the important part of the embroidery triangle is hooping. But when you have the mighty hoops, it's pretty much no thinking involved. Okay. I, I used to do the the you know the ones where you push and you tighten it up. Okay. That probably lasted for like a month. Okay. I I I I wanted to know what was there, is there a better way to do this? Because this that that part was the headache. That was the part that I hated. And then once I saw that Mighty Hoops, okay, everybody's seen Mighty Hoops. Everybody's familiar with Mighty Hoops, all right? So this hooping part, okay, that's the simple part. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take it. So I have a Recoma. This is our, these are our DST files. Okay, I got the DST file, whatever machine you use. Okay, just save it with that one, bam. All right, let me see. Let's see if we got a good view. All right, looks like we got a good view right there. We got front row seats right there. Okay, I'm just gonna do it uh one color. Okay, I'm not gonna try to match the colors right now. Uh, let me select. Okay, so since this is a uh, this is a first round, this is a first round stitch out. Okay, so uh, usually when you're working with a brand new company and you're digitizing. If you knock it out in the first round, then I mean that's super brownie points for you. But a lot of times you're gonna digitize something and you're gonna make minor tweaks. Okay, so uh, if you have to make minor tweaks from the beginning, it's no big deal. All right. All right. Let's see. Of course, we always trace. Okay, because you never know. All right. Bam. Should be good. Let me let me go up a bit. Save some space here. All right, so bam, bam. Uh, right now I'm using a 7511, just regular needle. This is my three-year-old Ricoma here, okay? Uh, all my flats, my flats, anything flat, beanies, polo shirts, I'm using it on this machine, all right? So I have all my ballpoint needles here. Uh, so yeah, three-year-old, it's still working. It actually, sometimes it works more than my uh, brand new machine. All right, this is the newer one. This is the, that's the one that does the hats, okay? But this one is all flats and my samples, especially right now, 
I am going sample heavy, all right? I'm going sample heavy. All right, let's start this. All right, exactly like how we programmed it, exactly like how we saw it on the on the replay, on the software replay. Okay, it's exactly like what should be happening. All right, I'm right here on the tape on the desk. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Um, Let's get some questions right here. Hey, what's up, Crafty Puerto Rican? Also, share this live with your groups. Yeah, definitely. Share the knowledge. All right? There's knowledge right here. Why cutaway? Uh, that's just what I'm used to, cutaway. Um, right now, cutaway is if, if you're going to wear it on something that you wear or something that stretches. You want to use cutaway, okay? Um, yeah, exa exactly right here, okay? Boricua, you nailed it. Uh, use cutaway for clothes, all right? Anything that you wear that you're going to put in the laundry, you always want to put uh, cutaway. And, yep, that's how it goes. If you wear it, don't tear it. Yep. All right. Bam. Appreciate the support, Boricua, super sticker. Appreciate that. All right. Where do you get your needles and what size needles do you recommend? Uh, I go to, uh, I, I use all stitch and I use, and I also use Gnold. Uh, Gnold, you need a, uh, you need a reseller license to go to Gnold. Uh, they have, they have a lot of good stuff there, but all stitch just for regular real quick stuff. You could use all stitch. They have everything. Uh, needles. So for my flats, uh, I'm using ball points for anything that I wear, anything that stretches. Okay. Uh, for my hats, I'm using sharp. Okay. So very good question there. All right. Uh, polyester polos, do you normally use two cutaways or one? Uh, definitely two, but I used a, I used a performance cutaway. Okay. For polos, uh, there's a special cutaway. All Stitch has it. Ganold has it too. They have the same one as All Stitch. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, performance cutaway. It, it has a special uh, webbing and the lining. Okay. It's not perfectly lined straight, going uh, horizontal and vertical. It's actually uh, going diagonally, so it holds the it holds it better. All right. Very good question. I just subscribed to your channel. Yep. Puerto Rican uh, X agent just uh, subscribed to your channel. That's cool. Uh, old school using the 3.5 inch disc drive. Oh, my, oh, all right. That's super old school. 3.5. All right. Let's see where it's at. All right. It's doing the little house right now. All right. All right, hold on. Let me see this. 3.5. You're talking about that. Oh, man. Yeah, that is super old school. All right. Oh, bam, bam, bam. All right. Yep, yep. I use Performance Cutaway from All Stitch also. Yep, that is my favorite. It has never let me down. All right. All right, it did that jump. You could hear, like I heard when it, when it did that jump on that roof. Oh, that big, that. We, we extended that jump even more. All right. So, um, all right. Let's kind of, let's go take a look at our. And then you already know that's the best sound ever is the, the signal. Bam, bam. All right, hold on. Let's see. All right, hold on. Let me add some lights. Fix the lights right here. But so far, so good. 
All right, bam, bam. Let's see. Let's put it closer to the light. All right, so this is looking clean. And let me take it. I usually like to take it one step further. Let me get this closer. Okay, when I'm really on analyze mode, what I do, okay, take this off here. Hold on, let me move this table. Let me move this table so it could be right under this light. All right, a little better. Let's see. All right, when I'm on analyzing mode, I like to take it one step further, okay, and use the magnifying glass, okay? That just gives me the, let me see. That lets me see anything that looks kind of funny. All right, this is like next level type analyzing, okay? Because nobody in their right mind is gonna be looking at stitches like this, all right? But as a digitizer, you wanna make sure everything that you that you uh, programmed, everything is looking exactly like how you put it, all right? And then we have our jump stitch right here, okay? So what I like to do, so we know we put in a tie in, tie out, so you can rest assured that nothing's gonna happen to your, uh, when you cut it, okay? So what I like to do, I use a sim, rip, a sim ripper, okay? And just kind of, okay? Now clean cut down there. You wanna make sure you get it as close to the to where it started okay and then i just use some tweezers all right all right bam it's like it never happened okay so it looks good right there stitches look very clean exactly like how we put it all right let me see all right, let me know what you guys think. Can you see it? Let me know if, how it looks on the camera. I think it looks pretty clean. All right. Uh, what I want to do uh, in uh, in some of the more future shows. Hold on, let me get up right here. Uh, what I want to do on some of the future shows is actually start going on garments. So right now we've been doing it on twill. Okay, but uh, I'm going to start lining up the the polo shirts and the hats and everything. So when we're when we're designing, we're going straight on garments. Okay. Uh, bam, bam. Yep. Look great. I only see two jump stitches. I would cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now we're just um, we're kind of just doing a sample. Once your sample looks good, now you can start doing all the other stuff. All right. No puckering. Yeah. Uh, okay. Use the magnifying glass too. Yep, that's like next level stuff. All right, uh, your your customers definitely appreciate you going in, going that extra mile with attention to details. All right, so let me go ahead. Let's uh, take care of some questions right here, and then we could probably call it a day because you know Saturdays are always good days. Uh, bam, bam. How about all the dry? Okay, good one right here. How about the dry fit shirts? Yep. Okay, dry fit. This one here is, I think, a dry fit one here. Okay. Uh, let me show you right real quick. Dry fit, that's where the money's at. All right. Uh, let me show you what I got right here. So, what, what we're going to do, we're definitely going to make an episode just on polo shirts. I have about uh, 12 different uh, styles of, of polo shirts that we use. Okay, so um, every shirt has its, um, every shirt is like a different 
a different uh, type of uh, approach that we got to have. Okay. Okay. Regular cutaway. Okay. Regular cutaway. It doesn't have any lines. So there's no lines going down, forth. Okay. But then you have your performance. Okay. Your pro. This one's actually not open. Let me let me find one that's open. All right. So let me see if I could get a good view on this. Actually, put it on this one. All right. Notice it's like it's a web. All right. It's like a uh, diagonal. Let's see if you can see it better on this one. You can barely see it. All right. But they're diagonals. They're, they're running diagonals. That's way that that way. If your design is trying to stretch one way, everything is kept very tight all in together and one. All right. So that one here, this one's the pro eight by eight. The eight by eight works good with the 5.5 mighty hoop. Okay. Can't go wrong with that one. All right. Let me see. Let me get some questions and then we'll call it a day. There's always a good questions. I think, uh, even if you think, even if you think everybody knows the answer to your question, you'll be surprised how many people have the same question that you have. Okay. So if you have a question, always feel free to, uh, to write it down right here. Okay. Because you are probably helping somebody out. And if you're not helping somebody out right now, maybe somebody on the replay, okay. Maybe somebody on the replay, uh, is being helped. All right. All right, hold on. Let me find my question right here. All right, good looking out, Craig. Let me see. I'm trying to pull up this uh, super sticker. All right. Enter. Oh, there we go. Bam. All right, good looking out, Craig. Appreciate that. All right, I, I had a good question right here. I'm trying to find it. Hold on. All right, um, bam, bam, let's see. New to the channel, wife is thinking about getting a Melco machine. What's the difference? What are your thoughts? Why Ricoma? Okay, always, always a popular question. It's like um, Ricoma versus Melco. Okay, they could probably make a uh, uh, reality show about it because people always talk about that. I don't know anything about Melco. I've never touched a Melco. Okay, uh, people have Melcos. They're happy with their Melco, so. I'm pretty sure they work. Okay, uh, I'm good with my Ricoma. I have a uh, I have a Ricoma review where I talk about Ricoma. I get into the details why I chose Ricoma, and my Ricoma is uh, it 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 could match the same level of uh, quality that I see at Lids. Okay, I could go toe to toe with my machine. So I don't get paid by Ricoma. Okay, uh, so that's just my own personal thoughts. Okay. Um, it's always good to ask somebody that has a Ricoma, ask somebody who has a Melco. Okay. But I've seen uh, successful people on both sides. Okay. And then you have your next level of type of machine. Okay. And then it's always a question of, uh, Bardane's, Tajima's, ZSK's, that, that, that topic will never get old. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see how they come out. Yep. Looks awesome. Thank you. Barb looks awesome. All right. And then, uh, Man, let's see. Looks great. How much do you charge for digitizing? So right now, I don't I don't offer digitizing as a service. Okay, uh, we only digitize for customer uh, work. Okay, so but to outsource. All right, because uh, you can really find good digitizers. Uh, that's outside of the U.S. You can find real good digitizers, very cheap. Okay, uh, one thing that I do want to start. When I do start offering digitizing, it's going to be more for uh, commercial use type customers. It's not going to be for, you know, the smaller everyday type projects. All right. That I mean, that's the ultimate goal for us here at the shop. All right. But that's why we're, our uh, skill level, right, is always slowly getting better. All right. Just like everybody else. All right. Um, let's see. Um Going to buy Juki Tajima SA8 needle and broader machine. Would you recommend it? Uh, I've never seen one in person. I've seen it online. 
I mean, I don't, I, it, it looks like it does uh, the smaller type work. Okay. It all depends. What is your goal? Like, what do you want to do? My goal coming in was to uh, make hats, make the best looking hats. So I went with a machine that specifically, specifically can make hats. If you want to make hats, you might have to go with something bigger, stronger. Okay. If you want to do flats, patches, polos, yeah, that, that smaller one, perfect for you. Okay. So it all depends. What are your goals? And then you, and depending on what's your goals, you got to step, you got to think three steps ahead of your goals. Like, okay, after I accomplish that goal, cause you're going to be surprised in embroidery, you're going to accomplish your goals real quick if you're on top of it. Okay. So whatever you want to get into, that's what you can do. Okay. Because if you're only going to make polos, you're good with a smaller machine and polos. There's a lot of money in the polo in the polo uh, business. All right. All right. Good looking out, Craig. Once again, 20. All good. All right. Uh, Wanna depends on your learning curve. All right. That's answering a question. Thank you for answering a question. All right. Uh, do you get in-house tech support? Uh, from which company? Are you talking about Recoma? Uh, no, I don't get in-house tech support. Nobody has ever came to my house. Uh, I've had a situation. So I talked about it on my first review where my uh, my first machine, right? It was like a scene of Ghostbusters where that thing was like turning on and off and all sorts of crazy stuff was happening. All right. Uh, I called them up that day. We did a live a live chat and they they kind of had me uh, push some stuff, open some stuff, and we and we got it and we fixed the problem. All right, so uh, that's that's the only time I needed any tech any type of support, but it was all over FaceTime. Okay, so a lot of times um, stuff like that they could have you check certain things, and um, and then you could you could troubleshoot it. But yeah, not in house. Do you get in house tech support? Let me know if that was your question, right? Because I don't know if that was that time. Can you go over star real fast? Have a job that needs some work. Oh, dang. All right. Hold on. My digitizing software just fell asleep. Okay. For real real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna digitize a star real quick. All right. All right. Um All right, good one right here. Any company you recommend outside the USA Chief for digitizing service? All right, so I, I believe it or not, I still I still uh, send out some of my designs out to a digitizer. Uh, if you've been following the channel, you know that uh, my go-to digitizer is uh, Luis Victor. So Victor digitizing, all right, to me, he is the best of the best. He probably works the fastest, okay? So the speed that I work at, he works like times 20. Okay. Uh, very easy to work with. He has a website where you just submit your, 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 whatever design you need. Okay. I'll, I'll put him down on the link too down below. All right. He is the best of the best. And it's always good to follow him because he puts out freebies. And the good thing about freebies is you could kind of, I, I watch freebies. Like I want, like I used to watch football. I used to stand, I, I used to sit down and watch two hours, two, three, four hours of football. All right. And, just analyze everything, right? But now I go back and I watch replays of stitch outs, especially some of the be uh, some of the real good digitizers. You'll see, you'll learn little techniques from seeing people from seeing uh, certain stitch outs. All right, even when you pay for a stitch out, you can go back and replay a stitch out and just see what the digitizer was thinking, because no digitizer is going to digitize anything the same. Like no no two digitizers going to digitize anything the same. All right. Uh, all right, hold on. To answer that question about the star real quick, hold on. Let's see if I could bring it. All right. Let me answer a question by actually answering a question because sometimes, let me tell you how I like to answer some questions. Uh, the best way to answer a question is to physically show somebody exactly what you're talking about, right? Because sometimes you could explain something, okay, but it's not 100%. Uh, uh, you can't get it. You can't take that. You can't grasp that concept 100%. So let me answer that question real quick. Let me see if. 
Uh, I asked about my machine's operation when doing 400,000 stitches. All right. I don't know if that was a question. All right. Uh, bam, bam. Can Victor digitizing be found on Facebook? Yep, 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 yep. He's like a uh, rock star in the digitizing world. All right. Um, it's Vic, Vic, Vitor. So minus that C on Victor, V-I-T-O-R, digitizing. You'll find them very easy. Yeah, just like that. Thanks, Craig. All right, Victor digitizing. Yep, that's the best of the best right there. All right, where's a good place to purchase polos and hats? What polo shirts and hats are best quality you found? What's Yes, that's my question. Thank you, Vance. All right, uh, polo shirts. Okay, so I have two vendors. Okay, I have two vendors that I use. Uh, hats, I use uh, SNS Activewear. I only mess with FlexFit, Youpongs. Those are my go-to brands. I know those brands like the back of my hand. Okay, I know what it likes, what it doesn't like. Okay. There are other brands. If a customer specifically asks for a certain brand, uh, of course, I'm going to I'm gonna work like that. But overall, I got tons and tons and tons of inventory of one brand because you could uh, you can easily spend a lot of money just going all over the place with different brands. And also, uh, I only have a limited amount of shelf space. So I like to keep it all one brand just to keep my inventory nice and tight and compact. So SNS for hats. Uh, and Sanmar, Sanmar for, um, uh, polos. Okay. Uh, well, Sanmar for polos for Adidas. So these Adidas, uh, this is Adidas shirt here. Uh, Sanmar and then Nike, uh, SNS. I want to say SNS has Nike. Okay. So Nike's SNS. So those two, my go-to. All right. Uh, I mean, all right, cool. Let me do this last one and then we'll call it a day. All right. So this one's a good question because this is a star right here. OK, so remember, I'm going to go back and I'm going to digitize all these logos. All right. But I'm going to do it with less audio just so you guys could kind of see and have it in the background and see how I go about doing it. And then I'm going to do a stitch out also. All right. So stars. Um, stars are very good to know how to do. OK, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to break this star into one, two, three, four, five pieces. OK, so. Let me just show you a brief plan of what I'm going to do. I'm going to chop up this try this star. I'm going to I'm going to chop up each piece like this. OK, each star is going to look like this. All right. OK, now let me tell you what I'm talking about. OK, we're going to do sand stitches. OK. Uh, we're going to make a point. Let's go into metric. So right now I'm just answering a question. We're talking about stars. All right. So that, that, that stitch right there, that was about 0.44 meter, uh, millimeters. That's kind of like the smallest I want to go to. All right. And then, um, what we're going to do, create some sand stitches and we're going to come kind of here in the middle. All right, I'm actually kind of off. Usually I, I, I draw out the star a little bit. Okay. See, okay, H. Just refine these uh, nodes real quick. Okay, and then you're going to do this five times. Okay, so you do that again. Bam. You could, uh, you could mirror this, but let me just show you here. Bam. Bam. Bam, and then once again, about 0.44, okay? And you're just doing that over and over and over, and that's it, okay? Let me just do that real quick here. All right, that's going to be super small, but it's cool. All right, bam. And what you want to do here in the middle, you want to leave a little, a little gap. There's going to be a little hole right there. Because these threads are all going to combine in that little middle part. And you want a little space for them to breathe. All right. And when I say breathe, it's because they're going to expand a little. Okay. What I like to do, I like to draw my lines just so I get perfect stars. But for right now, 
Okay, just want to give you a kind of heads up right here. Bam. 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 All right. And then when you uh when you're ready to uh line it up, we want to start this side first. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm just gonna space it in that in that order. I'm gonna go this one, one, two, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, and then fix that order. Okay. Um and then just put the uh, we could just use the closest point. So we have one, two, three, four, five cuts, which is very unnecessary. So apply closest joint, bam, we have one cut now. Okay, so when we replay it, let's replay this. Uh, hide others. Control R. And it's gonna do this first one. Second one. It actually went in uh, the reverse order that I chose, but this one still works. Okay, so this one's gonna do it, bam, bam. It's gonna end in the middle, bam. All right, so let me know if that was, Try that out, okay? Just make sure this little gap right here, you have a little gap in the middle. Make sure you have that little gap just because these these uh, stitches are gonna be pushing in. All right, very good question. I like those questions where you can actually show an example by doing a call. All right, all right. This one, uh, Barb says, I use Sandmar and apparel blanks. Yeah, so there's a bunch of... Uh, uh, what I wanna do also for next week, uh, so we have uh, the ISS show coming here soon. I want to talk about all the embroidery related uh, vendors that are going to be an ISS show. So even if you don't if you don't go, we're going to talk about who's there, why are they there, who you should talk to, okay? Uh, who, who to make connection. Of course, if you if you do go, okay, I'll tell you uh, companies that you should really, really, really get to know, okay? Because there are some really good companies that are going to be there, and also there's some uh, there's some training there, okay? And we're going to talk about who's going to be there as training. And which which uh, which classes you want to go to? All right, all right. Jill Smith, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, thank you for. All right, uh, each 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 uh, each class. Okay, I'm telling you, it's gonna get better, 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 better. Okay, right now we're 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 very on the fundamental type stuff, very basic stuff. But what we're doing is we're adding little small information on top of each other. Next thing you know, we're gonna have built a big, strong pyramid by the end of this year, okay? My goal is for you not only to know how to hoop and push the start button, I want you to know everything about there is to, uh, when it comes down to digitizing, okay? Why, if you get an error, where did that error come from, okay? That's always the big question on every group. Why is this happening, okay? So we always have to know what is our Achilles heel or what is our weak link in the whole triangle? Okay, so we're gonna learn all that. Um, make sure, okay, if you have any recommendations, anything you wanna see, let me know, okay? Let me give you a clue on what's going on for next week's episode, okay? I have a little clue what, and it's a specific industry, okay? So next week, the show is gonna revolve around the medical industry, all right? So we're gonna talk about, um, uh, medical uniforms and all the logos, very popular logos. All right, the scrubs. All right, always a big question. Lab coats. What font do I use? All this, this, and that. So make sure, okay, make sure you put your recommendation. You put your alarm clock. Thirty minutes. All right, at least thirty minutes before we start, just to give you enough time to kind of grab a fresh cup of coffee. All right, and remember, uh, the show is always on the replay. All right, we're always on the replay, ready to go. All right, so make sure you share it with all your 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 embroidery friends. All right, and if I missed a question, all right, I'm gonna go back. Uh, I leave the questions available for the replay also. That way, if you're re-watching this or you're watching it in the future, um, you can always look at the questions. Sometimes we have some uh, experienced uh, embroiders here that could easily answer questions. All right, like I said, I don't know every question in the world, okay, um, just this last one, what event are you talking about that's coming, it's the ISS in Long Beach, it's like the biggest uh, 
apparel decorated. It's not only apparel decorated. It's like so much stuff, all right? So much different stuff. Uh, I've been there like long, long time ago. And even though they have all these certain rules on it, okay, it's still uh, a lot of times companies, they introduce new stuff at that show. Okay, very important show. Very uh, A lot of cool stuff happens, all right? Even though I'm not going to be there, okay, it's still Southern California where I'm from, okay? So I still know people over there. I, I have connections, eyes and ears over there. They're going to know what's going on there. So I'll let you know who you want to talk to. All right, let me see this last one here. As an RN, that's a niche I plan to get into. All right, that is a big niche. Niche, all right, is the medical industry all right my mom she works at a hospital okay we're doing we're constantly doing work there all right i'll probably make something for my mom next week also while we're talking about the medical industry all right and then let's just finish with these last two you're the man romero thank you for sharing appreciate that danielle all right and we'll End it off right here with the Crafty Puerto Rican. Thanks for sharing your experience and knowledge. All right. Thank you, everybody, for uh, hanging out. We actually did, what did we do? Two hours. All right. It literally felt like 20 minutes. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you right now that this was the quickest two hours of like the past couple of years. All right. Uh, I think when we're all learning in a learning environment, all right, you can never have enough time, but I think two hours, all right, is more than enough time to uh, let's just use what we learned today and spend all week and go hard on that, okay? Any notes that you have, write down notes, okay? Believe it or not, I, I'm constantly taking notes, all right? I'm like super old school. I keep it still with a, a notepad, okay? I know there's different ways to take notes, okay? I still keep the paper pen, all right? Um, all right. So I'm going to see you guys, uh, next week, same time, same channel. All right. Uh, make sure you put your reminders in there and all the good stuff. All right. Uh, rewatch this over and over and over and over. All right. And then any questions, leave them down here in this comment here. That way, uh, it's easier for me to answer you the question here on the, on this page. And also that way, any question that you have, you might help somebody else in the future, in the future that has the same question. All right. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for showing up today. See you on the next one. Peace out.